Hey there YouTube. So today I thought I'd do a little short video going a little bit more in depth into a teardown of a little Dell uh, thin client. I, I had about, you know, probably a couple hundred of these and I only have a couple left. So I thought before, you know, I sell the last couple, um, I tear one down that is defective and show you the actual uh, components and in, uh, in, in, in close up. So this is a little Dell FX170 and it's um it's a, it's got an Atom CPU in it and it's got an Intel chipset and in the back what you have is uh the the AC adapter input it runs on 12 volts it's got a um PS2 keyboard uh connector a DVI uh video um uh, port with also VGA uh in there so it's a DVI D and um, sorry, um, DVI-I, I mean, and uh, and then I have two USB 2 ports and a gigabit Ethernet adapter. In the front, I got the power button, the a network activity light, headphone jack, microphone jack, and two more USB 2.0 ports. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and um, and fast forward to actually having it torn apart and we'll, um, we'll we'll take a look all right so here it is uh, this the, it, basically the the black screws are the ones for the case and uh, white screws here these guys are the ones that are that were holding the motherboard assembly within the case so let me get close here and show you all the little components so these these systems do have a, an onboard speaker so it's it's this little guy on the corner here. It's like a, it's a small, very small speaker, and it plugs into, I believe, this connector right here. And the motherboard, the heatsink um, for the bottom of the motherboard is this guy right here. This is like a little insert that goes inside the case. Let me see if I can take it out. Let me just flip this. It comes out. Yeah, there you go. And this is the uh, a heat sink that is for the chips that are on the lower side. I'll show you that in a moment. And this goes inside that part of the case. And it has these uh, thermal pads that um, touch against those chips that I'll show you. And, tra and transfer the heat onto this to the heat, heat sink. And also there's this other aluminum shield that also acts as a, as a, as a, um, a grounding plane, as you can see, so that you can prevent like static shocks. And at the, and at the same time, distribute some of this heat from this heat sink. All right, so that's just that side. And in the front, there's this little power button, which is just just a piece of plastic uh, with two little um, plastic um, um, hit, uh, I don't know how to call that. They're not hinges. They're uh, th those little tabs that are springy, like springs made out of plastic. On this side, this is the top. It goes on over the uh, over the top of the unit, of the motherboard. So you can see it's it. Airflow can go through it. This is all passive. There's no fan in here, so uh, you, you know they 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 have all the, this mesh kind of uh, design on it, so to allow some air to flow through it. The same thing is on this side, and on this side we also have a heatsink with a lot of thermal uh, a, a large thermal pad. And it's not as thick as the other one, it's, but the thermal pad is, is kind of wide because this thermal pad basically lays on top of the, the, the main heat sink on the motherboard. Okay. Another thing I can show you here, so that's pretty much it for, for that panel. Another thing I can show you here is the CMOS battery. So it's a, it's a, it's a typical battery that you would find on, on most Dell devices and you can actually buy these on eBay 
they are um, it's, they plug in using this small little plug over here. And on this system, since it has a battery, this would be by removing this battery and letting this sit for a couple of minutes. That that's how you would reset uh, any any uh, BIOS admin password on these units. Many thin clients don't have even, uh, you know, if you remove the battery, they, they revert back to a, a master password. This one doesn't have that. This one, if you, uh, behaves very much like a, like a normal computer. All right. So let me show you around the motherboard now. Uh, on the front here, you have a couple of LEDs, that one and that one. And I think that one, this one is the power light and that one is the network activity light. I don't think this header is used. That's that header is probably for something like a diagnostic port or something that I, I, I have no idea. This is the power button right here, and um, you have the 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 ports that I showed you, which are shielded, and there's this other shielding on top of the other USB 2 ports. The motherboard is held in place by four screws. One of them is underneath this, so you can see down here. That's the that's the hole. Another one here. No, another one there, another one there, and well, the the main components are for for the motherboard are here, but this is the IDE uh, solid state disk that uh, like a disk on module. So if I take this out, I already loosened it a little bit so that it's easier for me to sh to show you. This is one of those IDE disk on modules. So you could take this out, and if you wanted to have more storage. You could act, this is like a laptop style connector. You could actually um, wire in a laptop hard drive if you power it from maybe a USB port or some other power supply because you won't get enough power out of this port right here. Or you can put a compact flash adapter and kind of like hack it in, into the into the case somehow. Uh, or just buy a larger capacity one of these. On this side, you have a DDR2 uh, SO DIMM laptop memory module so if I to take it out I can just lift the clips like that and it comes out this motherboard will support up to two gigs this is a one gig unit okay and it goes into the the single slot there it's really nice that this is upgradable um, but yeah and then the last thing I'm gonna show you is underneath this heatsink is well not the last thing I'll show you the back too but when I take the heatsink off so you can see it's got a couple of areas here for, for these chips down here. All right, so let's see what we're looking at here. So we are looking at a the Atom CPU. This is a, let me put it upside down here so you can actually read the labels with me along with me. It's a 1.6 gigahertz uh, Atom CPU from the year 2007. So you can see here the, the numbers that I'm reading out. 512K of cache and 533 megahertz front side bus. And it's an Atom N270. That's, and it's, this is the die right here. Underneath that, it's I don't know what that chip is. I'd have to look it up. This is the main chipset. It's an Intel uh, G uh, like 45. Sorry, Intel GMA 950. That's what this chipset is. And if I get a something to wipe off the thermal paste, let me see if I can show you. All right, let me just wipe it off for the since this is a broken motherboard. I can't. It powered up once, and then, ooh, I think I'm making a bigger mess. I shouldn't have. I should have used alcohol, but there's nothing on this chip anyway. So, all right, and that's how you make a bigger mess because I'm using the wrong type of wipe. But yeah, it's just a die. There's no. There are no numbers on this die that I can see through the camera here. And it's an Intel G45. I'm sorry, I keep on saying that. Uh, uh, GMA 950 video. Sorry, GMA 950 
G45 chipset, I believe. Yeah. And uh, a bunch of, you know, additional stuff here. Uh, this is, what is this? Crontel? I have no idea what that is. This is the the Realtek sound chip. Actually, no, I'm wrong there. This, this is the RTL 8111 network um, chip, which is right next to the Ethernet adapter. So this is the gigabit Ethernet adapt, uh, chip right there. Looks like it has its own dedicated uh, 70, 25 megahertz uh, clock, or maybe that's a system clock and there's a multiplier somewhere. Well, there's, there are different clocks here. This is another one, 14.318. So that sounds like something that, that would be for video, for the VGA signal. And um, yeah, uh, the, the sound chip, where's the sound chip? I thought the sound chip was around here. All right, well, let's flip it upside down and see what chips are on the other side. All right, on this side, I have another chip. This is the an 82801 GBM. So this is like the chip set itself. Uh, this must be the chip that has the video uh, on it. And this must be the, uh, the pair for the IO. And that's that takes up a lot of the back end here. And this is, what is this? Can't tell what that chip is. Looks like uh, maybe some kind of serial F7105. I'd have to look. Maybe some kind of security chip. Um, and this is the via. This is the sound chip right here, VT1708. And that is probably some SRAM, perhaps. I'd have to look up the the chip on this one right here. I don't know what that is. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the tour of this, you know, broken uh, Intel Atom um, thin client. It's pretty much an Atom laptop in a very small form factor. It's bulkier than what will go in a laptop, but if you can imagine, like you know, I've, if if you didn't have this 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 upgrade upgrade path and all the chips were integrated this could actually be even made smaller and i've seen laptops nowadays where the motherboards are like this size like <laughs> and the rest of the space is just a big battery so um yeah these thin clients they make really nice little pcs unfortunately you can't really easily expand the storage too much unless you start hacking together something with like uh you know, cables and power from from either USB or from another dedicated power adapter just for the hard drive. But overall, they make nice little machines. So yeah, um, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, also, please subscribe because I keep on posting uh, a t a content with all my retro and newish computers. I have a series on flipping computers that are is I'm going to start soon, uh, where basically I have a box of about 40 laptops that I bought where, where I'm going to be um, going one by one and, and uh, fixing the problem. And um, usually it's just missing hard drive or you know some other issue and an AC adapter is missing. And then I'm going to try to flip it. I'll show you how I do that and uh, and then we can... We can look together to see, you know, how, how effective it is to actually flip computers in 2022. So, yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, it was a pleasure doing this with you. And uh, till next time.